Ooh. And they got punished heavily this time around. They're addressing that factor. And that's a ban there that you need to make. Taking away Death Prophet, especially if they aren't going to play it themselves. You know, we, know, we saw obviously OG last game, trying it out with no turn in the mid. And uh, obviously themselves wanting to go for something different as they didn't have that much success with it. But you can't leave the opportunity for LF1 to take it. They, again, as we're saying, you know, this team that wants to run at you, if they're getting the ball rolling with the Spirit Breaker Puck, Death Prophet being thrown on top of that, they're going to be taking racks even quicker than they did last game. It's not going to be their Terra Blade. We'll be banned out by LFY. See what else they want to take. Jeez. Leave PL was also the ban in the first game. They Batrider will be the one to be targeted. Still focusing on that Batrider. This time they don't have the Nyx Assassin, so it makes more sense. But yeah, they just have a lot of respect for S4's bat. OG. I mean, you look at some of the heroes we had last game. I mean, you, is it? Do you get to a point where you want to ban out the Morphling, or is this a hero that you should be able to draft with with preparations for? Or was it that scary? I mean, Mone, you know, he obviously did look like a beast because he got a lot of space. Granted, it wasn't like they tried to really shut him down. He got all the space in around. the world. Yeah. He really did get left alone. But it's. There's heroes that are similar to the Morph is the thing. It's like, you know, the anti-mage and stuff like that. Morph's a little bit... He can do a little bit more in the lane because of the damage from waveform. But I don't know if you really want to ban that. That's the thing. It's like we were saying, Elfy has so many substitutes of heroes. It makes yeah. it super difficult. It's like, what do we really want to ban? This one makes a lot more sense because they have the Night Stalker on their team. And we've been seeing a lot of people versus that Night Stalker. They pick up the Lycan to benefit from the darkness with their Howl. And it fits very good with the Puck and Spirit Breaker, those heroes that have a ton of catch, which allows Spirit, uh, Lycan to actually lock somebody down and eat them alive. Well, one of the heroes we saw being banned out last game by OG was, of course, the, the Ancient Apparition. Uh, I mean, this is another game where AA could work out quite nicely with Spirit Breaker and Puck making things happen around the map. Also, to have something to, to sort of put an end to this, this dazzle sustain that OG are going to have in the fights could be a... Could be an opportunity, but as you said, you know, it's very hard to predict what LGDFY want to bring in as they are in such a power of position, as we mentioned already, of course, secured top spot. They really can do whatever the hell they want. That's yeah, they... and and probably still win the game. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. They're changing heroes up a lot. They have not picked Spirit Breaker yet to this point, so this is right away they're picking it up. You know that they're not experimenting, but just feeling very comfortable. Message. They take the message for themselves this time around. Nothing too out of the ordinary there with that pick. Hope this is a core visage for LFY. That'd be cool. We've seen an EG attempt the core visage a few times. Yeah, but LFY, I don't think that we've seen them do that yet. Don't know if we will. I think that's more than likely the support hero, but... So they have good ways to deal with like the back line already. The visage familiars plus the puck to be able to find the dazzle. If they find that dazzle... The birds plus a puck coil, it's very hard for Dazzle to really do anything in those type of instances. If, of course, the Visage is able to get six at a good time. A very nice lineup to, to sort of kite up the Night Stalker as well, just yeah. having that Grave Chill, being able to, to benefit off the boost. A ton of damage yourself. as well already from LFY's draft. Oh, I love it. I've been waiting to see a Magnus game. I know we've had a few. It's got, had a pretty good win rate here, I believe. I believe it yeah. is in the 80%. Paired up with Nyx a lot. We I think we saw LGD run yeah. it a couple times with a PA and a couple other heroes, but yeah, it's a hero that's been kind of forgotten about a bit from a lot of teams. It's not, I mean, already looking at the three heroes of LGDFY, it's, it's not a game where you think this is this is an easy to, to find the RP match. It's, no, definitely not. It's going to be tricky. I mean, as you mentioned already with the, the familiar scouting things out, it's not going to be easy to find that, but and especially now with the Venno being Beno. thrown in once again. So you would imagine that they're picking this Magnus because of the cause, you know, OG are going to pick something that will benefit off that empower. Yeah. And you know, as we saw, you know, if they can, if they can sort of hold off this early aggression from LFY, draw the game out, and they have the, these cores that that are ready to take it on, they have got a chance. And it, any time you've got a game with that empower benefit, it can do a lot. But you, you have got to get past that sort of 20 yeah. minute mark, which LGDFY are not going to let them easily to do so. And there we Look have for it. the Ember. So Ember versus Puck to get those Searing Chains versus him can be quite nice. Doesn't really benefit too much from Empower and... Well, it can benefit wow, a bit from Empower. Nice yes. with the slide. Sure. It's can, nice with the slide. Yeah. And with the Weave. So he's going to have to go for more of a physical type aspect for that Ember then. I think it's looking a bit greedy, to be honest, though, from OG. 
in comparison to what Alpha Eyes got, especially because of the way they punish Greed. I mean, the M is nice, I guess, in the sense that at the moment, the only thing that's going to cause slight issues is the silence from the putt. Otherwise, yeah. this this Ember is out of there. He can play a very free game. I imagine with the Ember pickup as well, we are going to see Anna back in the mid lane on this hero, almost certainly in no tail. I would imagine so. We'll yeah. go back to the safe lane. So I, I think already I, I like this more than, than what happened in game one in terms of the, the picks. But Void to be banned out uh, by LFY. So another hero that, that would have benefited from the Magnus buff. And another hero that's kind of good at slowing down the game, especially when LFY are going to be grouping up, trying to break the high ground, almost certainly at a similar pace that they were to last game. Someone that can put a bit of a stop to that. Right now, OG's deep push is mostly just the Magnus Shockwave. They've got, you know, Dazzle Heal, but that's not really great deep push. You can kill creep waves a little fast, but not great. So I'm still a little worried. I'm still I'm worried for OG. I mean, it's probably just because of how fast that last oh, game was. Just, I think everyone's <laughs> worried for OG after game one. Yeah. It just feels like it's. It just feels a bit greedy to me. That's the thing. It's when I'm seeing these like high, fast-paced heroes okay. on the side of LFY. So they go for the PL. They're going for that that late game. Yeah, they're, they're really, as I say, trying to capitalize on the fact that the lockdown is isn't really there from LFY. Mm -hmm. As I say, there's a silence. Sure, if you get them, it's uh, good luck with the RNG on the, the breaker. Uh, familiar stuns are always something you, you, you certainly have to bear in mind, but they're not going to be there until a certain point of the game. LFY, maybe with this last pick, I'm going to be picking a bit of a harsh lockdown. So we're expecting it to be Mono's hero. Yeah. Super, almost only once again playing the Venom mid. In flame, taking the puck, puck. off lane. Yep. Unless they do want to try out the, the Visage core, which is it's always a pop possibility. We'll find out right here. Oh, that's that a looks safe like Monet's hero. Monkey King. That's a very good hero to deal with the PL. Oh, so I, uh, PL is good versus PL is one of the best heroes versus Visage oh, though. That's he's the gonna thing, build Battle Fury as well, isn't he? He's I hope probably so. gonna build Battle he Fury. He did it. I missed out. I <laughs> heard the rumors. The Owen Battle Fury. I heard craze. the rumors. The Battle Fury oh, Monkey King. And if there was a game to do it, yeah, with the PL. Oh, if he does it, I'll. I'll Mono, you beautiful man. But we'll see. We'll see indeed. But I'm hyped up for this game. Yeah. This I it could get messy. Yeah, I think it could get messy. I do like Elf Wise a little bit more of this game, but OG does have very elusive heroes, and if they can take it to the later stages of the game, as long as LFY doesn't go crazy in that laning phase, I think okay. OG's got a pretty good chance. But LFY's draft is looking pretty scary just for pressuring. That's Spur Breaker Puck. I mean, that's the same thing. Like, this, this, the thing is, the PL, Dazzle, and Night Stalker, this lane is much stronger, but sure. Spirit Breaker and Puck could still punish that a bit. And I think, I think as well, with OG's lineup, I'm much happier with the hero player combinations you have. You know what I mean? If Fly, Dazzle, Jarek's Night Stalker, S4, and S4, Magnus. Mag, I mean, that's and, the, any, no one else no, could you ask that, for. That's the, and Anna Ember, No Tail, PL. It just seems a lot better than No Tail, Death Prophet, and Anna Sven. You know, just, just their comfort on these heroes. Right there with it's you. It's a lot better, but at the same time, LFY, the same thing certainly can be said. And one a the mastermind on the Monkey King. In flame, you know, he showed us what he could do on the Nature's Prophet. A hero like the Puck that, that has a lot of higher potential in terms of sh flashy flare performance. We can see what he's going to do as we get into this game too. Once again, OG need this win to have a look in at potentially getting into its situation for the upper bracket. It doesn't guarantee them that spot, depending on the outcomes of the other games. They, it may be irrelevant, but if they even want to have a, as little as a chance, they must win this game. Yep. But it's going to be tough. If any of you guys are tuned in, LFY did dominate OG in game one. One of the... We've had a few stomps in the group stages, but that was definitely up there. Oh, that one, I mean, that was, like we were saying, it was a thousand yeah. gold per minute. And one Maybe. of the most surprising stops as well, because yeah. a lot of the times we're seeing it between these teams that, that we kind of go into the matchup expecting them to be at different tiers, but for OG to get beat down that hard, it's quite something to see. I'm just happy, Owen. We, we're getting the chance to see the safe lane Monkey King. Me and you did not get to do that other game. I barely even got to actually watch like, any of it, so I'm hyped up for this. See how he plays it. As I said, last time, I, I don't know how many times Money's brought it out. Definitely the once, at least with the Battle Fury. Check for you really quick. I'm pretty sure it's only been once. I know Fnatic and a couple other teams, or I'm pretty sure only Fnatic's actually picked it. And Liquid actually, I think, grabbed it once. But yeah, they've only played it once on Monet with that Battle Fury. And it was versus Patience PL. from Zoe. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It was definitely so versus all PL. the stars are aligning for that myth, you know, that, that mythical. Mystical Battle Fury Monkey King. Owen is probably the most happy person. For those who don't know, Owen loves Battle Fury. It's best we'll get that out of the way.
We'll see if it happens. So they're dodging. They're they are. They're avoiding this lane. S4 top to get a 1v1 versus the Puck so that he can actually get something. I okay. think they're probably thinking if it's a Monkey King versus a Mag, S4 is going to get super shut down. And they really need S4 to have a game because he's their real team fight. Everyone else is not team fight. The rest of them all need a lot of time to get online. S4 is all of it. I mean, the, th to the thing is as well, though, that, that bottom lane, I feel, is still not going to be an easy lane for, for OG, you know what I mean? It, well, once there's a couple of levels on the Monkey King, PL is a fairly squishy hero. Sure, you've got the doppelganger, but the range of the boundless strike is going to catch you post-jump. Jarrett's is there. Armor, though. True. Yeah, if they can try and punish their heroes around him. They're actually dodging it right away. They don't, they don't want the Monkey King versus the PL. Oh, they really want him against that Magnus. Yeah. See if we can even make a play. I mean, they've, they've got him and the Puck now up on the top lane. We'll almost certainly, you say, expect to see Inflame tag team back out to the bottom. I would imagine so, yeah. I think, the, yeah. I think the Dazzle makes it too hard to be when you're trying lane against. When you're on, okay. like, Monkey King has one armor. When with a poor man's shield, Visage has zero. It's pretty scary to land this. But now they might actually just put this as a try lane. I don't even know if they need to sit, change this one because Monkey King versus Magnus is fine when be one. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Then And you're getting the solo experience on this era that certainly relies on getting those early levels quick if he wants to start making the movements. And look already, boundless strike and S4 down to, to very low health. Does have the preparations for this lane. He's coming in, you know, come into it with multiple tangos and the salve ready. And we'll see how this one pans out. Bottom lane, that is certainly going to be where the majority of the action is. This three to three, trying to make a bit of a go on to Dazzle. They're going to charge through as well onto this, but Arfu's held back by the void from Jerax. No tell. Trying to force back DDC. Big heal, heal bomb. bomb. Doing a lot to inflame there. Ooh. But he will orb himself back out to safety. I love me some good old fashioned try versus try. All about maximizing the lane and using your. Uh, your regen properly. So let's take a look how the regen is for both teams. They have a lot on the puck and a lot on the PL, but other than that, nobody else really has too much charge coming out. Onto Ember mid. They've got the level two Kale. Yeah, he is surrounded in the tree line. DD as well. That is going to be your first blood. Ah, food to take it. Quick with the movements. Pulled it off early game on the Knicks Assassin in game one. Game Sky. two, he's in the right place at the right time. Season opening, he takes it. He always finds the right move. And now he's gonna go back to base, gonna have the Orb of Venom finished up. He's got level two for the ba Greater Bash too. So he's just gonna be keeping, keeping those moves around the map. And Fly, OG are trying to make that the uh, rotations as well. They want the Dazzle to be matched up versus that Monkey King. Straight away, as soon as Flyer heads up here, DDC is there with the response. Mid lane, Anna able to get the solo kill onto Super. Moves in with the Flame Guard, catches him away from the creeps with the root. No escape, so this time, big kill there for Anna, getting that solo action. Buying his boots before he died, and Super does not have boots, so he's just able to walk him down. Do have a charge on Anna? They're going to look to try and punish him off the bat, but it is a charge straight down mid, so Anna should be able to back off as soon as he sees it with the creep on the high ground. And, oh, he's actually going along the river. This could be, okay, with the root, he's fine. Did just have enough mana for it. Oop, Gale's Gale. actually gonna miss as well. Nice juke there from Anna. He has to juke that one. Was expecting it. No messing around from him. Lane's going infinitely better for OG this yeah, time this around, is, of course. This first three and a half minutes looking much, much healthier than game one did. Arfu, for the bash. The bottom lane. Bottom lane. No tail and Jarex move in with the silence on the puck. There's no that escape for him flame. Jarex getting the level two crippling fear. People don't expect that. Same time, top lane though. Mone moves in onto fly. S4 will find the kill onto Mone in response. But yeah, S4 now everywhere. in trouble. Arfu charging in, letting the gap be closed for TDC. There's the bash. the bash. S4 taken down. So they find Mone, but it does cost them both of their lives in that top lane. Three for three. A lot of skirmishing, but as you say, definitely more even on the field in comparison to game one. Both teams finding the action and finding the farm, as we can see on the CS. No one really falling that far behind the other side. Yeah, this is uh, really good for OG in the start, because I would say that their lanes are a little bit weaker. And they got the, they're got they getting the matchups that they kind of want, ma making these rotations happen. Look, it's four minutes and we've had three lane swaps happen. PL moves bottom, PL moves top, fuck, Mag moves bottom. Changing it up all over the place, trying to make sure they get those matchups. It's, a, it's that important. Ana getting gailed up mid. Some harassment coming out from Super. Let's see if they get a chance to go up top. Mane's in the tree lines. He is level four. 
two points with in the tree here as well. They can certainly try and go for them. Nocturne's relatively low on the mana. Doesn't even have enough to throw a Spirit Lance out. We'll have a Doppelganger. Fly and no tell aware of Monet though, as they do see him jumping from tree to tree. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Super again moves in with the Gale, finding these solo kills. Both taking each other down. We saw Anna do it, and now Super's the one to, to find some action. Monet will finally jump back down, missing on, on a little bit too many CS. Instead, really wants to go back in. He's hoping the DDC is going to be able to bait these two through. There is Jarex. a bit of a wraparound from the river. Yeah, Jarex looking to get involved from behind. They knew that he warded there. Yeah, they didn't straight to get up. The ward right away. Four heroes from OG up on this top lane at the moment. As straight off the back of that respawn, Anna's actually TP'd up to the top lane. They still haven't seen him either. They have a mid ward. I mean, they see he, the remnant. Yeah, they see him come gone. back. There we go. I was trying to look for the opportunity to get himself involved. But they didn't quite find it. Not too much time wasted though as he's back towards the mid. LFY still hanging around top. Monet. He can't get a chance to jump in. There's the charge forward. They're looking to go for fly. Trying to go for the easier kill. Monet jumps forward and commits with all the heal bot though. Just destroys DDC. There's the Boundless Strike coming through, but Fly holds on to the Grave. Now going for the TP. Is there the Bash there? There is a Fly gets out. Monet to be brought down as OG. Play that perfectly there. I mean, we saw LFY. Mid lane super as well. Getting skewered back by the Hasted Mag. And he is gone as well. OG there with some quick kills in succession from top straight to the middle lane. This Dazzle pick is going to be just going to be owning. Yeah, low armor heroes like we were talking about. Visage and Monkey King. Very low armor at the start of the game. Those skill bombs are extremely threatening. And it's nighttime, so during that nighttime, the Night Stalker is able to do a lot. Jarek is already making it work. Level 4 on him, level 4 on the Dazzle too. And S4 has Arcane Boots with level 6 already. So very good start coming out. And now the smoke. They're trying to make another rotation and punish Super. Super just ported mid. Let's see if they can do it here. Oh, they can actually are able to find DDC, it seems. Yeah, I'm going to try and move in upon him. He has got backup, though. They actually had the damage to bring him down. The remnant forward from Anna. They're going to get the chains onto two and again with the heal bomb. They take down one. Now Arfu looking for the returns. He charges in onto Jerax, but straight away Jerax just turns with the void and the, and the damage just ticking out from Anna's flame guard. They pick up another OG. Doing it here so far in game two. Eight to four as they lead leading kills. Super's trying to find Anna, forcing him back up the high ground, but Jarek comes back in. Be a little careful, ticking around with this. They're playing right around on the edge. Anna will TP out. Fly as well. Should just about make it. Arfu unable to close the gap onto Jarex. So again, OG get themselves a line. In fact, Anna straight back from the base, going forward, looking for Super. The flame guard Scaled, bringing him though. down. Now Anna's got to be careful. He's got He's mana for one remnant. He should be fine with that one remnant in mind, unless he gets mash bur mass bursted down. It's going to be close. Oh, oh, doesn't make it. Had to use the chains to try to get further away. Yeah, he, he just got a little too antsy there. As he, he came straight back in a little early after, you know, without fully regening in the fountain. Just thought that he could see an opportunity to take down Super's Venom. He's trying to keep that aggression because right now his flame guard, they can't really burn it off. It takes time for the things to take top lane. We might see an aggressive play. Oh, try to cut the tree. Yeah, there's no real good way to burn the flame guard quickly just yet. Once the puck is, gets involved, then of course there will be an assault with the soul suction too. But for the time being, no. In flame this time around. A little bit quiet. Just the nature of the nature of the matchup. It's just, he's just farming. Farming into puck. That, that is something as well. I didn't didn't think of that, but of course, you, you always see which the double gun is because of the number on his head, don't you? Oh, yeah, you do. That, that's pretty tasty. Yeah. Oh, Apu trying to go for an aggressive charge onto S4 with he the bus. God! Dead. Ana all over the place. He's a space maker. So that was the first coil expended and unable to find a kill. Put some pressure on bottom with S4 yeah, and Ana. I've got the chains. Like they don't want to try and make it now, but now Anna to get charged quick with the root though. Nicely done as he holds back our food. S4 does have the skew and the RP. They could try and find something. And they are just going to keep in flame pressure as they, they put that shock wave out. Burn through those raindrop charges. Burn those raindrops. Monet with the three points in the Primal Spring. The best scaling AoE spell that he has. 
bit different than we've seen a couple other players do, but I think I saw him do this as well last time. Also riding his build. Who again eyes on to Anna. Anna does find that invis room. Maybe able to pull something off with this. Fly soaking up the experience in the middle there. Trying to get himself towards that level six. We've got level six on Visage now. Pretty sure they want to go for a smoke up and go for some pressure play. Try to get a kill maybe on the PL. It's a bit tough, but they'd like to shut him down. Here we go. The puck keeps stopped. Yeah, in flames go there. They've got Coil online. They've got Visage familiars. This should be enough to bring Anna down, is down coming down up PL. though. Anna's in the neighborhood. Does have that invis room. If he heads up there, could. Do a good effort trying to turn things around. There's the Primal spring forward. They're going to look the to try and catch misses. down no tail. And indeed, the Coil catches no one. They do get the Familiar Stun onto Jerax, but already OG backing up underneath the tower. No tail is going to be chased down by Soul Assumption, but he lives. He's fine. And now the return comes in. Anna's there, goes forward, slide up fist to bring down Monet. May pay with his life, though, as DDC and Inflame look to finish off the kill. But with the Remnant across, he's going to get himself out of there. And OG lose nothing and bring down Monet. Very uncharacteristic mistake from Inflame there. Popped the coil after the doppelganging went off. It was like a good half second after the doppel went off too. So missing that kill and having to expend high resources and losing Monet. Good response by OG. And once this happens, space for S4 Magnus down on the bottom lane. Yeah, just farming. They're actually just making the adjustment now for the lanes. Uh, LFY that is. DDC just gets walked down by the Jerax Night Stalker. They do have a charge onto Jerax. We'll see if they can punish this. Anna's in the neighborhood, didn't quite get the chains out in time. They do have the familiar stuns. There's the first, in comes the second. LFY trying to bring down Jerax. Where's that bash? It's not gonna be there, but it doesn't matter. They do have just enough damage as the familiars come back up. Jerax was dominating. They actually able to get a decent streak coming out for the for the Visage with those familiars. Look at this down bottom. Money's lining this up. S4 starting to do a bit of deforestation. He hunts for the Monkey King. So quick to connect as well. That's for really putting on the pressure. He's nearly managed to take this tier one tower. Monet is going to jump down at the same time though. Mid lane. Anna getting charged upon. Super committing the ultimate. Oh, Monet is very dead. They do have Arfu in as well, but Anna turns. Nice chains onto two. Anna should be fine here with the remainder of the Flame Guard. Getting himself out of there in a deep bottom lane. S4, no tail, moving in. Takes the kill. Anna will be fine as he just TP back in time. Fortification comes out, but OG will stand their ground down bottom. Do still claim the tier one tower. Big concerns coming out for LFY. The Monkey King's getting shut down so heavily. Only th not even 3,000 net worth. OG's doing a great job of just following him around the map whenever he shows and keeping the punish. It's not slowing down at all. He'll be okay. In fact, he's going to give a bit of a beating to one of the familiars. GDC will drop it down. S4, very close to 1600 gold on it, and they're gonna, well, that'll help a little bit. The money did go the way of no tail though. Still, plus 100, always tasty. GDC now going to Zona upon as well. Two times with the familiar stuns, holding back the two of them. Jags looking to try and chase this one down here. Has never avoided, there will be a charge upon him. Can it save GDC in time? Yes, D no, he ticks out. No tail getting the kill there, I believe, with the orb of venom damage from the illusion. Now they'll look to punish. Look at the first kill. Again, the waning rift silence a little bit too slow. The Dream Cold will still connect though, and no tail not get out. So LFY do pick up a big cut, a couple of kills off the back of Ochi getting deeper. Space elsewhere across the map. Anna takes a tier one tower. Looked like some indecision coming out from uh, no tail and Jarex. No tail looked like he wanted to back up, but Jarex committed, so no tail follows and they pay with two. Oh, Ends and up he, not really he's being doing it. it as well. Monet is definitely going for the Battle Fury build. Versus PL? Definitely. Definitely. I mean, well, I, I guess the first indication as well was the fact that, you know, Monet on his Monkey King, he goes for the treads rather than the phase, which mm -hmm. we normally see, obviously, phase a little bit better. But the laning situation, you know, to, to try and get that chase down, get those Jingu Mastery stacks up. Yeah. But if you're building Battle Fury, if you're looking to farm treads, it's always going to be the better decision. Yeah. I think overall, like, if you're playing like this core Monkey King wants to just be in the midst of the fights, having treads is just better than the phase boots. They make you tankier. They make you have more mana pool, which you really need as a Monkey King, too. Top lane. They know Monet's going to be farming here. They're looking to get aggressive. Mag has blink already. Oh, can they catch him out here? Yes, they can. They have the vision. He, no, he, he can't see up to them. They've got to bring him down. They do. They'll just RP. No messing around from S4. Catches out the Monkey King in flame. Trying to play around with Fly. He does not have enough damage to bring this one. He's trying with the Dream Coil, but OG's there to turn this one around. They do bring down Fly. 
but they are going to be able to punish these heroes. They get the control onto the Spirit Breaker. Afu down. So despite even when LFY had the opportunity to get the kills, OG's always there with the trades. 15 minutes in, 15 to 9. They it's are looking a lot better in game two, bro. Yeah, they're playing really smart. They're making sure it's like every time Monet shows on the map, they just start bringing three heroes toward him. They're like, don't let him try to recover. Do not let this Monkey King have a game. They can mid lane. It's getting out to mid lane. Just accepts his fight there. Dragged back, fought down. OG with another. They're hemorrhaging kills all over the place versus this boost of travel on the Ember Spirit. OG just playing way too fast paced compared to LFY at this moment in time. Notel nearly has the Diffusal play complete. So LFY now probably wanting to sit behind the Monkey King a bit. They're, they might be expecting those kind of rotations coming out just because of how often they've been happening. So maybe with the Puck sitting behind Monkey King waiting for that aggression to happen and, and then they can turn it around. I mean, it's going to be such a late battle for Euro Money. Yeah. That is the thing. Not even with the money to pick up the first component yet. They are certainly going to need time. And even at that, you look at OG's lineup, Ember, PL, Magnus, it's... You know, I, I love the Battle Fury, but I don't know if it's enough to deal with that. No yeah, they're gonna... Late you go. Yeah, because they're gonna just start accelerating their farm so yeah. fast with this Empower. Like, we're already gonna be seeing Diffusal coming out for No-Tail, Ember Spirit as well. We can have Ma Maelstrom in a relatively fast pace. And yeah, S4 is just gonna keep empowering them. And the, when the game slows down like this, it benefits OG more because of that. LFY, we were saying, they have the better team fight if they were able to come out of lanes ahead because of the nature of their lineup. You know, Puck, Benno, Visage, these three examples right away, compared to OGs, only technically had the Magnus at that point. But now, they've already got Mag Blink, everyone else is pretty much online as well. Very hard for LFY to actually match up directly versus them now. So it's recovery point. They have to split up their resources and try to catch up. That being said, though, Jerax looks like he's going to be a fraud down here. Flame will take the tower up top, and indeed LFY creating the space and control around OG's jungle. OG has been stacking Ancients. How convenient. Just look at this, the Empower. They just cleared one triple stack and now another one. No tail, up to level 12. Right after that, Diffusal play was finished up and another 12. Minutes. LFY can get away with anything more in this top lane. Which is trying to get control of this jungle. As they do remain up top, one eight to TP down bottom. Has to be careful about it. Doesn't really want to go in on his own as Anna can definitely turn and bring down this monkey king at this stage. Plus one might be able to do something, but it's top lane where they are sticking around, keeping the pressure on this tier two tower. Arfu will be focused. No tail moving here with the diffuser blade. Arfu puts the charge out. There's the Whoa, jump forward. S four cuts him off, brings him back. That's on a charge unit. Very, very, very perfect. Done. Bottom lane, good silence. Do they actually have the damage and control to finish him off? It doesn't look like they do. Throws out a remnant. There's the jump across. Has another one. And Anna is fine. Blinks away. Despite their best attempts, they don't catch him out. They do still lose that bottom tower. LFY continuously being kept behind this game. At least they forced some reaction top. Got about half damage on that tower. So they were trying to make some space for the Monkey King. Got a little bit. His net worth went up quite a lot. He's already got the perseverance now on on way toward that battle theory, but still they are in recovery method. Six thousand gold lead for OG. One thing is that OG's lineup doesn't do doesn't do Roche crazy fast. Maybe if they pick up a medallion on the dazzle with that double and power, they will be able to do it faster and then I'll find to worry, but they have good ways to check inside the pick inside the pit, be it orb or plague wards or Visage Familiars. They're actually smoking up behind the Venomancer, expecting that OG aggression. They know that RP's on cooldown. It's still daytime for about a one more minute. They're trying to get something big out of it. Just waiting near the high ground. They're smoked up on low ground. Got the blink on him, Flame. He, oh, his smoke breaks. He knows somebody on high ground now. It's going to be very hard for him to get the jump. He's going to go and scout it out. Moves up to the high ground. Immediately rooted and silenced. So in flame in trouble as they fully focus him. Will you count the shot point with the phase shift? Now the dream call and the open super comes down. Again, another route though onto the puck. And the puck is gone. In flame down. No tail ready to chase down DDC with the diffusal blade. Finds the visage kill. OG take two, they may not be done yet as they jump forward, S4 looking to cut off Super, there will find the vision for no -Tail to close in, once again, OG chasing down with the heal bomb from Fly, three kills, 
nothing that LFY can do in response. And now it's not, they use the darkness, but it's also about to be nighttime, so it's a big swing in momentum for OG. And LFY struggling to find the situation where they can actually get those kind of kills. Tends to be usually Apu like leading the charge in most of their games. This time, he is not really able to as a spirit breaker versus those chains. Very hard to gank these elusive ELs and Ember Spirits. Trying what they can and make space for Monkey King to catch up. Okay, too many, too many deaths. OG, go back off from that mid lane. Apu, eyes on no tail on the bottom. It's not going to want to get involved with him though in a 1v1, at least at this point. But now picked up on Jarex as well, so huge amounts of LFY damage output to be to be negated. I mean, physical-wise, what, what is there? It really is just the Monkey King. Yeah, and the familiars, familiars and the Monkey King, yeah. yeah. Everything from the Venom and the Puck going to be made close to redundant. Let's see how that hood active up. Jarex, of course, can play this very nice. We saw at the start how much he's been involved in 6 3 Yeah. And Apu has on the break. Definitely. Apu got the first blood, but Jarex then afterwards, you know, he's getting the crippling fear, early level, just been moving really well around the map too, reading just where other is gonna be going. And yeah, OG. During all this downtime, like we said, they're gonna continue stacking ancients and farming those ancients with their double empowered melee cores. All fly. Position toward top, and he throws a scan. That's a jump from Anna, though, straight away onto DDC with Jerex there as well. The familiar stuns aren't going to be enough to hold them back. Doesn't look like it as they chase down DDC with the flame guard and the slight of fist from Anna. Another easy kill for OG. Get one of the familiars as well. Extra plus 100 there from the side, mid lane. Monet could be in a bit of trouble. No tail trying to close the gap. Monet jumping across. They try and break the trees with the doppelganger. He should be fine though now. No tail. Trying to help back. Super's there. In fact, No Tail's thinking about maybe going for this one. He wants to double ganger up to the high ground and chase this down. He's looking for the Venomancer. Super does get the ult off in time. Can they punish No Tail? He's gone incredibly deep. And is there to back him up. They're trying to get the ult off, oh but the silence just come out. Mone and Super are gone. Double kill for OG as Anna just cleans them up. He's going to get DDC as well. Triple kill for the Ember Spirit. I want to see Anna's damage output there. He just. Literally instant killed them as soon as they went in. No tail does drop, but Monet trying to use his Wukong's command and Ana just kills him before he's even able to get it off. Did not get a chance at all to get that off. Look at that, 3,086 damage in that short span of time. Yeah, Ana go and have. You know, to jump in with the sleight of fist and with that power still on him, that cleave damage. I mean, we said at the start, you know, I was looking forward to this game, seeing Ana on a on the Ember rather than the spam because this is a hero that, that Anna really can, can oh, pull out the plays on. You know what else happened? So those ogres actually walked from the medium camp into it as well, so he actually cleaved off of the ogres too on top of them. So a little bit of bonus damage there for Anna to bring them down even quicker. But yeah, they're keeping all the aggression up. They're bringing the fights to the Monkey King constantly. Every time they see him on the map, they're just trying there. to go. But there now, we go. Battle Fury's online. Battle Fury's online. 23 minutes and a little slower. It's then maybe Monet would have hoped. <laughs> Quite a lot, yeah. But this is when things change. The Monkey King has his axe. Oh, I'm pretty excited for it. I haven't gotten a chance to see it at all on Monkey Kings. I got to kind of squash the highlights and a little bit of that game when he did play it last time, but I want to see it myself. Let's see what he could do with it. Yeah, he's still, you know, he, of course he needs the recovery method still. They're quite a ways behind, 10,000 gold. I need, he needs to not die at the start of the yeah. fights, which is it's, it's quite a hard ordeal. Because he's, he's squishy. It's, squishy. It's, it's a low armor yep. hero, and you're playing versus double in power. These physical heavy bursters versus Monkey King is always one of his big concerns. He hates playing versus the likes of, like, PA, Ursa, these heavy physical damage dealers because of that. Yeah. You can throw Ember and PL in there as well. But now at least he's going to be able to clear waves out faster. So that's something that LFY was kind of lacking. It was really only the Puck who can just naturally 1-2 burst the lanes out. Now he can not only have to worry, not only have to use Primal Springs to push lanes out, he can naturally just auto attack, push them quicker. Top lane. Eyeing up Anna, but... He's got Lincolns. Not really one that you can go for. 1800, level 17. Anna, he, he's going for you. He's looking for DDC. 
Does he just straight up get this in the in the solo potential? He may have hopes to get the mark. Up. They are going to look to try and turn. Does Duke out the solo assumption? Still has a remnant back to safety, of course. And Anna is out of there. But Mono will save DDC with his presence, making sure that Anna doesn't stick around for the kill. Alify is not really trying to take big engagements. You can see the difference of the pace. They're like, okay, we're still in recovery method. Let OG come to us. We're not going to go to them just yet. And now it's level 18 on Ember. 15. Everybody on OG is actually pretty high level. 13, 14, 15, 18, and 18. And you take a look at that experience graph. It's almost a 15,000 experience lead. And approaching that 12,000 gold for OG. Makes it a lot harder for LFY to actually take fights. Manta style, fully complete on no tail. Nice four goes for the skewer. You're actually going for, um, you notice the Aether Lens on the mag this time around. So that extra mana wow. regen, so he always has the mana to use all of his spells. And to increase range on the skewer and blinks. Pretty useful. All of his spells do benefit from that. So Monet really needs the BKB for them to actually try to take fights, but still, 11k deficit. He can get brought down very quickly because even with BKB, yeah. very susceptible A to that physical. A lot of ways they can go for it, yeah. yeah. Let's see the plan at the moment is just maybe trying to cut off these creep waves on the top lane. Super. There's S4, jumps in, skewer super back. And super is gone. S4 quick with the catch. This time around, the, the Veno is not working for them that they would have, the, the way they would have liked it to. Four and six, he's it's been the punching bag a bit this game so far. I, you know, the concept that they wanted to have with it, of course, the play boards to defend. And it just jumps Another in skewer. And S4 finds the Omen to rip DDC out of the base. They do get the three man tree call, Monet moving in, thinking about getting the Wukong's command up, but he has to be careful. There's still an RP from S4, and S4 just brings him down, takes out the Monkey King. He's down for 50 as well. This may just actually be a Rax for them to be able to siege. They have the heals from the Dazzle. Flames trying to slow them down here, but he himself now in trouble. They surround him. He has got the face shift. Blink still on cooldown, though. There's the root. There's the silence. In flame down as well. OG turning up the heat. 27 minutes in a GG. It's it. cool. They will secure game two. Despite the insane beatdown from game one, OG are able to turn the series on its head. Pretty much pull out the same one here. The they made it minute. work. The way that they... I think the laning phase was the biggest thing for me. There are adjustments that they were making, trying to make sure that Magnus was matched up versus that puck, putting the PL versus the Monkey King. They were never, they never let Monet really get online. And every time he showed on the map, they would go find him and hunt him down. Jarex had some great movements, but I'd probably give the MVP to Ana this game because he was everywhere. Those was first 10 Anna minutes played. he showed in top lane, mid lane, bottom lane, back to top. He was just making the plays all over the place to shut down that Monkey King. So LFY couldn't get all together because once they do hit all their sixes on LFY, they could have had good team fight. But OG just didn't let them do that, and they got way far further ahead with that in power. Well, there we have it. I mean, as I said, we're not too sure on the standings elsewhere, but this does put OG in with the chance, potentially. I'm not quite sure how the other games are going. It does, of course, depend on how those other matches have resulted whilst yeah. going on during the series. But there we have it. LFY taking down the Battle Fury Monkey King, not working out. This, Sorry, Owen. It's all part of <laughs> all part of our just to make sure that it doesn't get nerfed, you know what I mean? It's it's a it's, it's good job. Good job, Mone. Keep it up, my boy. OG played this one really smart the way that they just focused on poor Mone. Did not let him get online. <laughs> well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another team that was able to take a game off LFY at the end of it all in the groups. We'll, uh, I'm sure there'll be a panel or, or something on later to explain the situation. I mean, Fly doesn't seem too happy. He so looks flustered. He looks very, very flustered. May maybe the news isn't great. We'll find out. I'm sure you guys in Twitch chat already know, so do be sure to ask the person that's uh, above you. Oh, Matt's smiling. Maybe that's good news. Or yeah, Matt's a happy lad anyway. Maybe he's just smiling all the time. Fogged is actually checking Twitch chat. I was checking to see if they were happy. Uh, uh, does anyone know in Twitch chat? Nothing yet. No, I'm just seeing a feels bad man, a monkey. Just some, some rigged and some, yeah. some random stuff. Some lulls, uh, D Illuminati. Keep nothing, it up, boys and girls. Good. But that's it for me and Fog. Don't go anywhere. I'm sure something amazing is going to happen on this stream where the panel appear and machine and the beautiful boys will tell you something. We'll see you guys about. Enjoy the show.